Hello, we are Daniel, Willem, Masha, Tommy and Tijn. We are doing a presentation about nuclear fusion. We are first going to tell you how it works. Then we are going to speak about the history. After that, we are going to tell the, about the present and the future. And, as la and at last, we are going to speak about the economy, evolving nuclear fusion. We chose this project because this is the next biggest big foo in science. Nuclear fusion, how does it work? Nuclear fusion is the act of merging two nuclei, which are the cores of an atom, to create one bigger nuclei. The result of this merging is that the resulting nuclei has a lower total mass than the original nucle nuclei's mass combined. The difference in mass has been transformed into kinetic energy. This can only happen when the particles don't have an electron shell to repel the atoms from one another. Electrons are negatively charged and therefore cause an opposing force towards other electrons. To prevent this from happening, the atoms must be ionized. This happens, for example, in plasma, also referred to as the fourth state of an element. It requires a lot of heat to bring an element to this state. The gain of energy is based on Einstein's principle which states that E equals mc square. E is the energy in joules, m is the mass in kilograms, and c is the light is light speed, which is roughly 3, three times 10 to the power of 8. One kilogram would be equivalent of 9 times 10 to the power of 16 joules world of energy. A standard nuclear fusion reaction is one of deuterium fusing with tritium. Deuterium is a hydrogen isotope. It has one proton and one neutron. The mass of deuterium in AMU is equal to 2.0. 14102. Tritium is also a hydrogen isotope with one proton and two neutrons. Its mass is equal to 3.016049 AMU. When the circumstances are right and the fusion takes place, a new nuclei will form as well as one single neutron. The nuclei, uh, nuclei is an isotope of helium, namely helium-4. Helium-4 has an AMU of 4.002602. The single neutron has an AMU of 1.008665. Taking this into account, there is a difference in mass before and after the fusion reaction. The combined mass of the deuterium and tritium nuclei is 5.030151 AMU. The combined mass of the helium-4 nuclei and a single neutron is 5.011267 AMU. If you subtract the resulting mass from the original mass, you will see that the difference in AMU is 0 0.01884. Using Einstein's formula, we can calculate the amount of energy that was converted from the difference in mass. 1 AMU is roughly equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms. Using this, we can state that 0 0.01884 AMU is equal to roughly 3.1 times 10 to the power of minus 29 kilograms. Putting this into Einstein's formula will result in the total joule gain of 2.8 times 10 to the power of minus 12. Nowadays we know one big nuclear reactor, the sun. The sun is a sphere of gas and mostly contains hydrogen. In the sun is gravity that keeps the gas together. But if there is no outward force, the sun will implode. The, the gas is this force. Because of the gravity, hydrogen and deuterium meet each other and fuse together. As example, if deuterium has an energy of 3 
to keep the proton with its neutron and hydrogen has an energy of zero because it has only one proton when they fuse together there is only an energy of two needed to keep it together but because deuterium had an energy of three there is one left this energy became a photon that want to leave the sun when this photon reaches earth it can be captured with the sun collected to give us free energy At this moment we are able to recreate nuclear fusion, but this is not energy efficient yet and leads to a hydrogen bomb explosion. Scientists are momentarily working on three kinds of reactors. The first one, inertial confinement fusion. This is a reactor that uses hydrogen. It compresses this by the use of lasers. Nuclear fusion has happened in this reactor, but it wasn't above the energy break even point. <coughs> so it isn't efficient. With new kinds of lasers coming on its way, this reactor might get energy efficient in the future. The second reactor is the magnetic confinement fusion reactor. This reactor uses magnetic, magnetic power to compress the elements. A plasma ring on the outside of the reactor makes the elements fusible. <coughs> this compression method was used from the 1915, but the break-even point has not been met yet. However, with new ways to create plasma, this uh, reactor, this reactor might get efficient in the future. The third reactor is the mag magne magnetized target fusion. This reactor is a mix of both the techniques. The elements get launched into the device together with plasma where it is compressed by magnetic powers. This technique is the least efficient technique that there is and, di and hasn't had a scientific development for over five years. Once one of the reactors is used for an energy plant, the output of this plant will grow ten times more than uh, the energy output we get from reactors nowadays. <laughs> the cost also will get very low. Of course, the reactors can be used for energy source, but there can also be but nuclear fusion can also be used for other things. <laughs> they can make uh, reactors into spacecrafts, which means any element can be used as a fuel. This is very handy because one of the biggest problems of going to Mars is that we do not have the amount of fuel to go to there. Nuclear fusion would also be great for car batteries because of the temperature not having any effect on the reaction. You would never have a dying car battery because of cold again. It can also be used as a destructive tool. Although creating a hydrogen bomb now, in the future it might get self-sustaining, which means it would literally eat worlds and explode all the time. This weapon would be useful against planets we do not populate. The history of nuclear fusion. During the 1930s, experiments were conducted in the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge at the United Kingdom. The experiments that were conducted failed. After World War II, the interest for nuclear fusion increased because countries wanted to create nuclear weapons. During the 1940s and the 1950s, countries such as the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union created different kinds of research programs to gain more knowledge about nuclear fusion. All these countries worked in classified conditions until the Atoms for Peace Conference in Geneva in 1958. This conference caused an international collaboration. In 1968, the Russian scientists Tem and Sakharov took a major step forward by showing the results of a new type of magnetic imprisonment machine called the Tokamak. This machine was able to run 10 times higher than 
other performed experiments. In 1978, Europe launched the Joint European Taurus Project, also called the JET Project. This project was ready to be launched in 1983. The JET Project was formed by Europe to investigate if nuclear fusion was safe, clean, and could be used as an unlimited energy source for the future generations. This project showed good results. The years after this project, um, different countries started to invest in nuclear fusion. Economic influences of nuclear fusion generated energy. With the use of fossil fuels, the cost of producing one kilowatt of energy are pretty high in comparison with the cost of producing one kilowatt of energy provided from nuclear fusion. At the start of nuclear fusion energy, the costs will be extremely high, as in billions of dollars. This because we'd have to set up a completely new network that is capable of transporting the energy from the plant to the companies and households, the plants at which the fusion will take place have to be built, and the prices of new energy has to be calculated. The amount you'd have to pay for energy as a four-person household could go two ways. It's either higher than the amount we have to pay now for energy, or lower. It's logical to think that the first decade or two the costs will be much higher. This because of the underlying costs the producers made while setting it all up and building the plants. The costs for building and setting up the networks will be brought into the energy costs of the consumer. And thus the price would be significantly higher. Unless the building and setting up of the plants, networks and other systems is funded by the government. They would have a few reasons to do so and one major reason for this is environmental. Nuclear fusion has almost no air pollution in comparison to our fossil fuels now. So if the government would fund the build, a household would only pay for the energy they use. Then the costs for a household would be significantly lower than they are today. But there's also one important reason the government wouldn't fund it. Nuclear fusion plants are one hell of a big investment in costs. So no other company would start building another nuclear plant that produces exactly the same energy only with possible higher prices. There would be a monopoly on energy. One company who decides everything from prices to building, from who gets more and who gets nothing. As history shows, this system doesn't always work out that great. Prices could be extremely high and there's no one to protest or give an alternative. To summarize it a bit, the entire economics around energy would collapse. Stocks will drop, prices fluctuate or fall down with nothing left to save. Then this one company comes along and decides everything. And what they say we'll have to pay, we will have to pay. Or we just give up everything that needs a socket. This is our vocabulary. And these are the sources used for this presentation. Now you get nuclear fusion. At least we hope you do on some level.